What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Surf in the Stream, where every week we are on a quest to find out what is the greatest movie of all time. So I went and saw A Quiet Place day one yesterday, and I have been seeing reviews. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm here to be completely honest with you. I have been seeing reviews saying that day one is the best movie out of the three movies. Quiet Place, Quiet Place Part 2, and then day one. And that is the best one in the series. I could not disagree with that more. I think day one is is a good movie. Like, it is is actually a pretty damn good movie. But when you compare it to part one and part two, it doesn't come close. It doesn't come close. And that's what this review is going to be doing. We're going to be comparing this movie to the other two movies. But we're also going to be talking about why you should go see this movie in theaters right now. Because it is a good summer blockbuster horror movie with a lot of tension and you should absolutely go see this movie in theaters first off i think directing is really really good in this movie the shots and cinematography in this movie is really really good now with that being said some of the cgi and by some of the cgi i mean 80 percent of it is not that great but it never really takes me out of the movie with how bad it is it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, I noticed it, and then I just kind of just forget about it. The thing that this movie really sells me on it being just a good, worthy companion to the other two movies, a worthy prequel to part one and part two, is the fact that they're able to craft some really good characters, and the acting is absolutely fantastic across the board. And I think... The main protagonist, I don't know from, she has to get from point A to point B, is not necessarily the most compelling reason to, to make this journey, but it fits her character, so I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. And that goes the same for all the characters across the board. They're able to, yet again, make you care for the characters in an interesting way that when things happen to them or they're put in certain situations, that you actually kind of give a shit about them and that's kind of where this leads into why it's not as good as part one and part two the characters in part one especially the dad because i'm a father and then the kids and the mother's relationship and then adding uh killian murphy's character in the second movie all those characters are emotionally compelling and you get attached to them you give a shit about what they're going through and the situations that they're in and when bad things happen to them it kind of breaks your heart spoiler alert for quiet place part one when the dad dies in that movie it absolutely rips out your heart and then crushes it because of all the legwork that they did in the hour and a half before that to make you just fall in love with those characters and you just feel the anguish that they're going through and it just it was a hundred percent earned you care about these characters enough throughout the course of the movie but they never reach the height of any of the characters in part one and part two and that's really why i feel like this movie um, is not as as good to me as the other two but with that being said one thing that they're able to do very well in this movie is create tension the tension, I was on the edge of my seat 75% of this movie. The other 25% was the, the quieter, slower moments where they're doing character building. Like, I remember one, it's actually several scenes. It, this isn't really a spoiler, but when the attack happens and there's hundreds of these aliens, you know, scouring the, uh, the rooftops and then coming down on top of the buildings, on the side of the buildings, and they're just going full send to all the people that to me is just it's it's kind of terrifying in a way but in this movie because they do make you care enough for the characters it puts you on your edge of your seat and i really loved some of the action sequences in this movie some of the some of the horror sequences which i think they did a pretty damn good job there's a lot of jump scares in this movie which and it does play with your expectations some throughout the course of this movie which I don't mind jump scares if it does that. All in all, I still think this is a really, really great movie, and it is definitely worthy of the franchise that it is involved in. And for a prequel to be this good is kind of kind of rare, to be honest with you. Like usually when movies go back in time 
and do a prequel to a already set bunch of movies, they usually don't turn out very good. But this one is the exception, and it's never a moment in this movie that I ever felt like I disliked it. I don't think they do anything just overly wrong, and that's why I would say go watch this in theaters. I, I think they do a great job throughout the, the entire movie. It's just, it's hard to not compare this movie to the other two movies. And full disclaimer, I fucking love the other two movies. They, those are two of my favorite movies of all time. They're they're on the list of like my top-ranked horror movies, and I fucking love them. And that's kind of why I'm a little bit harder on this movie than maybe some others. But I saw some reviews out there that said Day One is better than the other two and it is the best A Quiet Place movie in the franchise. And I can't disagree with that more. Um, I think if you are a huge fan of the series, you're going to love this movie. But just expect and just kind of lower those expectations a bit that this one is just not going to reach those heights. Now, there's one thing that I will say and that will answer, and it's not really a spoiler. Because you can look him up on IMDb, and his name is like fucking front and center. Somebody asked me, does day one connect to part one and part two with any of the characters? And the answer is yes. It connects with one of the characters from part two. You know, when they go to the uh, to the little island, and his character is in this movie. So that is the only connective tissue, connective thread from those two movies and then this movie, which I thought was cool. I wasn't expecting it by any means, and I thought it was a nice addition to the story to have him in there and give him a little bit more backstory. But yeah, guys, I, I think this is absolutely worth going to see in theaters, and it is it is a worthy companion to the other two movies, despite the fact that it never reaches the heights of how good part one and part two is. So let me know in the comments below if you have seen A Quiet Place Day One and whether or not you would recommend other people go and check it out. And also let me know if this movie is better or worse than the other two movies. But guys, in the description below, I have links to all of our social media accounts. We would greatly appreciate it if you went there, like, subscribe, follow, do all that bullshit. Really helps us expand and improve the podcast. And go follow us on TikTok. That's where I do a lot of instant reactions. I'm doing instant reactions the day that I watch the Acolyte series. And then if I go see a movie in theaters, as soon as I get out of the theater, I do an instant reaction video. And then I come back later and do a proper review. But other than that, guys, I appreciate you joining me for this review. And I will catch y'all next time on another episode. Latest.